what I'm seeing. Really, remarkably exceptional. Yes, it is. What's your take on that? What's your take on it? Well, uh, I love what I see. My name is Noor Ismail Nozol, diesel engineer, filmmaker, storyteller. Join me as I share my passion for building trucks and traveling to the remotest part of northeastern Kenya. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and remember to hit that notification bell to make sure that you catch up our weekly series of videos. is good topography is what interests me really just ideally perfect look at it the words fell me and the sun soon gonna be setting on horizon have such magic places and it's quiet there's no people here there is no, that is about our ultimate goal, searching for the places like this, where you can't see easily a human being. That's emptiness. In the middle of nowhere. Yeah, in the middle of nowhere. Fantastic. This and road, now, this, this, this road goes, remember, goes to Kakuma, Lokichogyo, and also across the border. Sure. And when you're going to Sudan, there's a way it has to go to Juba. Yeah. But uh, we have rarely seen any vehicle with the South Sudan number plate moving around. That's uh, another surprise. Yeah. Uh, 
I don't know whether the border is closed or... We have no idea. Yeah. So remember, we talked about this area, uh, particularly this Kakuma, or Lokchokyo. It's uh, old, like just Turkana at large. Yeah. It's located on the northern part of Kenya. And uh, it's the only region which is connecting three, connecting three countries, which is uh, Uganda on the western side, Southern Sudan on the northern side and Ethiopia in the northeastern side of Turkana region. And right now we are heading to the Kakuma refugee settlement, settlement to have a uh, pass all night there. Yeah. And early morning we're gonna tap on the road again to meet to the Lokijoki or as Lokijoki is now our last uh, finishing line on the northern northeastern part. Yeah, sure. Which is going to take south and Sudan. And after that, after reaching there, we're going to already count it as one of the goal achieved, reaching one of the many border points as planned. What a sense of joy and excitement, beginning of the achievement of what brought us here. Expedition over land, expedition of a lifetime. Yeah, it's all about uh, touring to the borderline or close to the border of the country surrounding the route we are using. Yeah, a little bit of uh, circumnavigation, but sure. this one we are not going to name it. Because we say the motive which drive this trip, this particular trip, it is uh, searching for the emptiness or searching for the remotest part of Kenya. And here we are, I think we are achieving some part of the goal. So sure. those are the remote, really, most remote part of the, this uh, beautiful country. And as we keep going, I think once we reach the campsite, we'll able to share with you yeah. what we'll find. I think we have a high expectation as per the research we, we did earlier on, that there's some campsite there, but we have no idea how it's going to look or if they will uh, welcome us easily. We have no idea, but we are, are high optimistic. optimistic, high hope that we may get a magic or spectacular campsite. Let's keep going and enjoy the ride smooth ride for you. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. We're looking forward to uh, pulling down. This is a mock tunnel and uh, we will share whatever we will have on the plate with you guys. Yeah. Then it was worth to come also this part. Oh, regret. Yeah, yeah, keep going. We're happy of what we have. Uh, Kakuma, we have to stretch ahead. And very soon, I'm very sure, very soon, before the sunset, we may be already reach Kakuma refugee settlement. But as we are not refugees, we are not going to camp in the refugee settlement. We are just uh, explorers, overland enthusiasts. Going. But a really, really spectacular sun setting with a light which is really gorgeous. Anyway, what yeah. can picture oh, sun setting? Really, I can see the big open sky blue. Will take us home. Yeah. Enjoy the song. It's a perfect day for the road. Blue sky will take us home We'll take it easy, we'll take it slow It's a good day for the road And time goes so fast You with the ones you love But I won't worry today Even if time flies away What is the logic behind the cattle? Most of them have seen they prefer a flat land 
or lowland area to grazing their domestic animals. No, I won't be 100% uh, certain of his own, but I want to be, I, I guess, I believe that it's because of the natural vegetation. It's, it's little flat, it gives them a better vision of their animals. The first sight. The, the vegetation is not more than very thick. You can easily see the predators, uh, the animals. Uh, but I think also, I have, I have an idea. Maybe it's my point, my personal point of view. Maybe because remember, all it's around me, my own mountain. So it's like they, they're looking for a, a valley or where this water easily can be. Like a basin. Yeah, this guy is big normal. For now, when they, there's a lot of crowds. They migrate from, you know, they move from one place, place to place. Place to place. To place. Yeah. So remember, they don't have permanent houses. Yeah. So uh, if, when it's a dry spell, they move towards where they can find uh, pasture and uh, water for the earth. So this being part of a rift valley. Yeah. That's why we said most of them are within our vicinity. Yeah. But I believe that after when the rains come back, yeah. they will move backwards. They will move back to where they, they, they came from. But I actually believe that the reason why they love this kind of scenario is yeah. because of one of the reasons that I've already told you guys. Yeah. But I, I believe you also have your own opinion. Yeah, yeah it's it's an opinion. Yeah. And, uh, it seems like uh, all this around the mountain, to me, it's like the rain which comes from the mountain. Here, this area, so maybe in some time, we find it's flooded because it is low land and the water can easily, the, the, the vegetation can most of the time remain green because it's a low land and they, it may contain water for a quite long period of time. That's the reason why maybe they prefer, because we may can even see the vegetation is quite green compared to the other high mountainous areas. I think that's because I've seen here, we said Uganda, most of the fact was the, this Barara area, Barara, what do you call that really settlement? Uh, it's a huge thing, it's within Tanzania, Kenya, all of them. They put that as region. But that's the passionate uh, people, which is the normal people. But uh, as you know, so the conflict of the land conflict, I don't think those nomadic uh, culture is still on. Because now crossing from each territory to another territory, it's always it's become a little bit of a challenge, not like centuries ago, when people have been moving freely when there was no border. But since now the, the country has been divided, and uh, with the conflict of the ethnic conflicts, I think also going to make it a bit hard to cross the region of uh, different ethnic groups, don't you? having the grazing area it may force you to cross the border or the territory of an opponent or other ethnic groups which can easily trigger the conflict or the war so it's better everybody to, to maintain their borderline to not cross it whatever drought or famine or what is up to you because if you cross the line the bigger the powerful will cross who they can confront and win the win over the territory. In most cases, we find people are saying both sides. Sometimes when there's a drought and the harsh uh, season, they have no choice because you can't 
tolerate, resist seeing your animals dying when a, a ethnic a neighbor, neighbor has a green vegetation. The only thing, if you beg or ask permission, you will not be granted. The easiest way is to challenge or to confront. Survival to survive. for the Yes, and sir. What your opinion on such of this? Because we have heard, we have read books yeah. about Turkana. Mm. I think those are the things also contributed. Definitely, so, definitely. Yeah. Uh, you have to go through someone to get what you need. If it means by force, I have yeah. to pass through your compound, for example, yeah. to get my animals to feed themselves, whether you like it or not. So yeah. these are some of the uh, main reasons that bring these conflicts. Yeah. People get to have some tensions yeah. and uh, even fight each other in you know, that yeah. kind of situation. Yeah. So it is a way of their life. And you know, uh, it's a French it's a nature. word. Yeah. French word said, uh, la raison de plus fort est toujours la mer. The reason of uh, the warrior, the, the fighter, who has the strength or power, is always the best. Because the more you have power, you have uh, your warrior, the more you're going to have the right to to capture, to win over other the weak uh, ethnic groups. And I think also we had, I don't think, I don't know if it's true, uh, those people, most of uh, the ethnic group are close to Kana, they have possessed the ammunition, but the key reason of that ammunition is not to uh, confront foreigners, or it's also contribute to the security. Oh, but it's a bit confused, a bit weird. A civilian who has no idea about the law of the country and has been possessed the ammunition to protect the sovereignty of the country, it's a bit weird. How do you, can you justify that? Because someone does never go to school, does know about the law of this country, to possess an ammunition, defend the country's sovereignty. Doesn't make sense. You know, my take, my take on that is, uh, you know, you, you know they put a number of their enemies, as we discussed. One of the reasons we say they prefer being in this kind of land is because it's floods. They can easily see their enemies. They can see their animals. So since they put a number of their own enemies who are so you know, uh, cattle, cattle wrestlers nomads like themselves. So acquisition of guns is a, is a very key thing uh, to help one protect his animals. Because if you don't possess a gun, then your animals are at stake. So it's a double role in the sense that, on the other hand, they also play a big role in for their own government. Because once they have a gun, it's, they leave everybody who comes towards them their enemy, not knowing that they could also be an enemy of the government. So I believe on the other hand, they also contribute to the uh, positive and the negative yeah. side of it. Yeah. In normal circumstances that, uh, you know, it's, uh, both government, like if you see the Turkana from Kenya and the, the Karamujong from Uganda, both the Ugandan government and Kenyan government, they have the way of how they uh, discuss with these pastoralists when they have their own weapons, it's mainly for their own security and their uh, animals. When it comes now to the citizens or their country, they're not going to do anything wrong, anything bad that will hurt their own people. Mostly it's the, to be, you know, better side from their rivals.
If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and remember to hit that notification bell to make sure that you catch up our weekly series of videos.